Hello everyone, this is Chris from Spoon Graphics, back with another tutorial for Adobe Photoshop. Over the years I've shared several tutorials showing how to create retro text effects, mostly using Adobe Illustrator. So today I thought I'd mix things up and show some techniques for creating a retro striped text effect with a 70s vibe using tools in Photoshop. Photoshop's layer style tools are the natural place to start, but as we'll discover they don't quite cut it. Instead we'll make use of the step and repeat trick to generate an extended drop shadow effect that can then be divided up into coloured stripes. This kind of retro text effect is ideal for creating t-shirt designs, so stick around till the end to see how my washed and worn textures pack can easily make your artwork look like an old cracked t-shirt print. So to create retro text effects in Adobe Photoshop, first open Photoshop and create a new document. I'm using dimensions of 2000 by 1500 pixels. It helps to set up your colour palette so all the hues are easily accessible. There are probably some fancy ways to set up swatches, but I like to simply fill little squares on a new layer. The colours I'm using to construct my retro text effect are a green of 7EC8B5, a light beige colour of F3E2C9, a blue of 384261, a red of D6533A, and an orange of E5BB7D. That first green colour I'll use as a background, so with the background layer selected, set up the colour by sampling the little square with the eyedropper tool, then fill the canvas with the alt and backspace shortcut. Use the type tool to lay out the wording of your design in your chosen font. I'm using a cool script font named Seikana. Follow the link in the description if you want to pick it up yourself. Now you might think Photoshop's layer styles could quickly create this kind of text effect. You can set up a drop shadow with minimum size but maximum spread so it has a defined edge, then set the angle and alter the distance to extend it from the text. You can even layer up additional drop shadow effects to create the striped appearance. The only problem is you don't get a nice straight line between them, it's all a bit gappy. The alternative technique is a little more long winded, but it's all worth it in the end. Double click the text layer and add a colour overlay, sample the dark blue colour from the palette. Add a stroke next, configure the settings to outside and 20 pixels, then sample the same dark blue colour. I'll show you how to preserve the editable text later on, but to keep things simple and to be kind to your computer's CPU, right click the type layer and choose rasterize type. Next we'll use the step and repeat trick to create a better drop shadow effect. Use the command and T shortcut or control and T on windows for transform. Nudge the layer left and up by one pixel, then hit enter. This is the step portion of the step and repeat technique. Then press the shortcut command, alt, shift and T to repeat the transformation while also placing the result on a new layer. Keep pressing the same shortcut to extend the effect further and further. Since we're adding multiple coloured stripes to this text, we're going to need a lot of copies. Keep going until you get to 150 layers. Photoshop might be bogging down a little by this point, but don't worry we'll sort that in a second. First double click the top layer to change its layer styles. Change the colour overlay fill to the beige from the colour palette. Select layer 149 then shift and click to layer 100. Right click and choose merge layers. Rename the single layer blue. Select layers 99 to 50 and merge them too. Rename the layer to red. Select and merge the remaining layers using the right click menu or the command and E shortcut. Rename it to orange. The simpler layer structure will definitely help ease the CPU load. The blue layer is already blue, so double click each of the remaining layers and add a colour overlay, sampling the appropriate hue from the colour palette. The step and repeat trick is a much better way to create this alternating striped effect. You could even create several more stripes if more layers were added to the stack. Let's add a cool striped effect to the text face too. Double click the top layer and add a gradient overlay. To see it we'll need to turn off the colour overlay. Edit the gradient and sample the orange colour as the first part of the gradient, 
then add a handle a little further along, also with the orange fill. Give this handle a specific location of 40%. Add another gradient handle and sample the red colour. Alter its location to 40% as well, so it butts right up to the previous colour, creating a hard line, rather than a gradual change of hue. Add another red at 45%, then add a handle with a green fill. Alter its position to 45% too, so it creates another hard edge. Set the next green colour at 50%, then the light beige colour at 50% as well. The Seikana script has a little bit of an upwards rise to it, but the stripes are perfectly straight. Edit the gradient overlay and alter the angle by about 5 degrees. A problem arises as a result. Those crisp lines are now all jaggedy. If you edit the gradient and change the position of the first gradient colour to 39, it blurs the line too much, but 40 is too hard. However there's a weird fix for this, instead click and drag the gradient handle slightly. Even though the location is exactly the same at 40%, the line is now much smoother. Repeat the process of adjusting each colour in the gradient to smooth out the lines. This retro surf themed text effects would make a great t-shirt design, so this is the perfect opportunity to make use of my washed and worn textures pack from Spoon Graphics. These textures make your designs look like vintage t-shirts. They were made by coating, scrunching and distressing real fabric with real inks, so they capture the authentic cracked surfaces of old t-shirts where the printed graphic has flaked away from being washed and worn over many years. I also have a free washed and worn textures pack download on Spoon Graphics, I'm using the deluxe version, which is bigger and better with double the number of textures at twice the size. Both sets are linked down in the description. I'll let you into a little secret. Subscribers to my mailing list are offered washed and worn deluxe at half price. Use the code new subscriber if you fancy picking it up at 50% off, making it $10 rather than $20. Open one of the PNG washed and worn textures into Photoshop, then copy and paste it to the top of the layer stack. Use the Command and T shortcut to scale and position the texture to find the best flaky bits. My favourite method of applying textures is using the knockout technique. Double click the layer and change the knockout method to shallow. Reduce the fill value of the layer to zero to see the texture punches out every layer to allow the background to show through. The washed and worn deluxe set also contains a couple of handy seamless t-shirt textures. Paste one above the background layer and repeat it to cover the canvas. Merge any duplicates onto one layer. Set the blending mode to multiply to allow the texture to interact with the background colour. Then reduce the fill to tone down its prominence. That flaky ink texture is also affecting this background t-shirt texture. To fix it, just make a group of all the layers the washed and worn texture should be applied to. The only downside to this method is the result is no longer live text, so you can't edit the wording. It's much less CPU intensive this way, but if you really did need to preserve the editable text, let me show you how it's done. Let's go way back to the start before the layer was rasterized. Instead, convert it to a smart object. Continue adding the color overlay and stroke as we did before. The next problem arises when we try to use the step and repeat technique. For some reason the repeat part of the process totally glitches out. I shared a tip on how to fix this back in my video titled Retro Text Effect Adobe Photoshop Tutorial from back in 2017. It's nice to see that 5 years later the bug still hasn't been fixed. To make the step and repeat trick work right with smart objects, first duplicate the layer and rasterize it to convert it back into a normal layer. Apply the step by pressing Command and T and nudging it up and left. Then apply the repeat stage just once with the shortcut Command, Alt, Shift and T. Delete these two rasterized layers, then continue applying the Command, Alt, Shift and T repetition to the smart object. For some reason it works just fine now. Continue creating your 150 plus layers and hope your computer doesn't crash halfway through. The top layer can be adjusted with the usual layer styles. In order to create the striped effect, Rather than merge the layers, create groups instead to preserve all the smart objects inside. Each group can then be given its own colour overlay layer style.
Don't forget to make use of that washed and worn deluxe texture pack you just purchased a few moments ago too. This smart object technique will result in a much larger file size, but the advantage is you can edit the text from within the smart object by double clicking the layer thumbnail. When you save and close the PSB, every single one of those 150 copies will be automatically updated too. If you enjoyed this tutorial or learnt any new tips and tricks, a thumbs up on the video would be really appreciated. Stick around for more of my content by subscribing to the channel and be sure to join my mailing list at Spoon Graphics to download all my free design resources. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.